I think it's fair to say I have quite a lot of the EP Solar products and the EP Ever ranges. Um, here we've got my first ever solar charge controller and my second and a couple of other examples as well and I have to admit this isn't the full collection. I've also bought a number of their accessories, the uh, Ebox Wi-Fi which is an RS485 COM port adapter to Wi-Fi and the battery remote temperature sensor as well. Now I went for the Tracer A series when it came out because it has this large LCD on it and that's uh, an improvement over the BN series and the other previous Tracer MPPT uh, solar charge controller series from EP Solar. Um, and it's, it's pretty good and as you can see there it's showing my battery voltage and it's using a carousel and going through the battery current and then onto the load side and the battery temperature those sorts of things but it does take a little while for each of those values to appear on the screen so you either have to sit and wait or you have to press and go through them and inevitably oh, you go past the battery voltage that you wanted to get to there we go second time lucky it is a good charge controller and that screen is very useful but there are some improvements that could be made well now thanks to the people at banggood.com who have sent me the MT50 remote meter for the Tracer, the Landstar B series, uh, the Tracer BN series and I think it works on a couple of others as well. So without further ado let's open it up and uh, it comes in a plain cardboard box, there we go, uh, remote meter MT50. Uh, connects with the Landstar B series, the Viewstar BN series and the Tracer BN series but of course this came out before it also comes out with uh, works sorry with the Tracer A series which I'm going to plug it into and uh, I have to say um, it's pretty hefty um, wow that's quite large um, the screen's a decent size but the actual box for it and the case, it's a mounting case and then there's the actual uh, device itself, there's the RS485 RJ45 plug there and the screen and uh, if, yeah if you put it next to there it's pretty big. So I'll just put that to one side for a moment so you also get a bag of screws to mount it with and some rubber uh, bits to go over the holes there and uh, a cable and I think when I was looking around at this it does says please don't connect to PC and it also says this end needs to be connected to the meter so uh, I'm going to plug it in to my Tracer MPPT solar charge controller which should be getting a bit of sun at the moment because it's quite bright outside but before I do, it is worth noting this is a straight through cable. We can see the corresponding colours uh, going to the correct pin. So this will be pin one, I believe, on that right hand side, and that's white. So if you did need to wire an extra long version of this cable, um, that's easy enough to do. So I notice that there is a cutout in the case there for this cable, because it's the only cable that needs to go in. So let's uh, do it as it's meant to be done, through there, into the back there, and uh, straight away we've got a smiley face. Well that's nice to know isn't it? Um, we can see the solar PV has got sun on it and there's power going into the battery. The batteries are at 14.1 volts, the backlight did just turn off then, so that's what 15 seconds, 10 seconds perhaps before the battery goes off. We've got an LED to show that there is communication. My PV voltage is 37.5 volts and we're bringing in 800 milliamps and that's converting into 14 volts and just under 2 amps. And of course it mentions the load is at the same voltage as the battery which is always the case. It is quite a nice clear screen to read especially with the backlight on so I'm quite pleased. Now a first criticism I would say 
that these numbers are quite small. And if we got rid of this silly smiley face, everything could be a bit bigger. And uh, I believe this smiley face only has three states, happy, sad, and somewhere in the middle. And again, that's just battery voltage level and state of charge. Well, we're already seeing that below here. And uh, I, I'm not sure that's really needed. And to take up, what, a quarter of the whole screen with one smiley face? Well, that seems a bit silly to me. Now, if I turn a few loads on, turn some lights on in the shed. In fact, the load isn't on, is it? There we go, now the load is on, and if I turn some sh shed lights on, hopefully we should be able to see, there we go, 2.1 amps coming out of my battery, meaning I've just about got enough solar coming in to uh, supply the loads in the shed. So I'll turn a few of those unnecessary ones on, and let's start looking at the menu system. So if we press OK, the backlight comes on, um, OK, does that turn off and on the load? Yes, it does. Bit of a delay there while the communication happens and the confirmation. There we go, so I'm into the menus by pressing up and the manual control. Yeah, that's why I like to have my load control on, manual. And we can see more information on that load as we flip through these screens. And that's interesting, and I like that, that it actually shows power in watts. Because when we talk about solar, we talk an awful lot about watts, and then we start converting voltages and currents, and uh, it's nice to be able to do it in watts. The controller temperature is 17.8 degrees, and its status is normal. Excellent. The photovoltaics, 37.3 volts, 700 milliamps. That's just under 25 watts we are in the winter and uh, my 200 watts of solar panels aren't making much energy at the moment the battery is at 13.8 volts and 1.9 amps going in presumably if we put those loads on that will show a negative value there we go yeah so negative means energy coming out and positive means energy going in, current going in, charging energy. So we can see that we've got a total of 14.86 kilowatt hours since this uh, solar charge controller was put in. And we can see accumulation figures there. But obviously since I've recently turned that off, these have now reset because this uh, Tracer A does not have memory. We can see it's attached to the Tracer A 2210A and it is December the 4th at 12.15 and we're back to the main screen. Aha, right, so let's go back again. Ooh, even more menus. So pressing escape gets us through the various menu sections, device info, Tracer A, it's rated volt 24, well... I guess it's up to 24, 20 amps, that's all correct. There's my serial number, and that's all we can see there. Escape, and then we can do control parameters. Now this is the bit that is particularly useful from the MT50 because you can't complete these steps on the Tracer A itself, or in fact any of the Tracer models apart from the I and the E Tracer, I believe, without external additional products we can see that my battery is set to user type and it's got 176 amp hours in the battery bank this is correct because i've set this up with my pc we've got some uh, temperature comp compensation on there um, and all of these are editable i think if we press there we go, so we have to confirm our password there, and then we can change these figures. 17 volts, 16 volts, 15 volts. So if I go through my charge limit, 14.5 volts, well I'm happy with that because this is what I've set up before. 
Um, equalization charge. Well, we're in the winter, so I might bring that up slightly and save. So I'm now able to do quite a lot more with my Tracer MPPT solar charge controller from within the shed than I was able to do with just the inbuilt screen and the two buttons. We can also change the load parameters, uh, device parameters, change the device password, do a factory reset, failure info, well with no failure info because it's all working fine, and meter parameters. Okay, so this is showing the actual meter is an MT50 and that's the hardware and software versions I believe on this particular device. The backlight says it's on for 20 seconds. So all in all I think this is a really handy device to have and worth considering if you're using one of the EP Solar charge controllers that this is compatible with. The screen is nice and clear and having all that information on the screen at the same time I think is really useful. The menu system was fairly intuitive, we managed to work our way around all the various different menus and save some information when that was able to be done. It is worth mentioning that this actually is powered by your charge controller and uh, typically it uses less than 15 milliamps or uh, less than 23 if the backlight is on. The only issue of course is you can only have one of these types of devices plugged into your solar charge controller at any one time. So you can't use this and the Wi-Fi adapter or the USB cable at the same time because this is using RS-485 and the way EP Solar have set it up is this is the master device and the solar charge controller is the slave. So you can only have one master on an RS-485 bus so that means that you can only have one device plugged in at any one time monitoring your solar charge controller. So for me, on my Tracer MPPT solar charge controller, this isn't the right solution because I'm using the Wi-Fi adapter and monitoring that setup on my PC. However, this might be quite useful for my lithium iron pack because I could replace the ViewStar solar charge controller with this... Uh, Landstar charge controller that also works on RS-485 and of course this has got no screen whatsoever so this will be really handy for that one. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below and comment if you can. I'll see you next time, thanks for watching.